As we come out of the emotional high from last week's red wave that swept the nation, we're still facing a very real battle to defend our families and freedoms in our commonwealth, where the legislature is still controlled by leftists. So today we're bringing you a powerful message from Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears on the power of Christians being a voice for the voiceless. Plus, we're going to talk about how you need to start speaking up now to your state legislators. Welcome to Speak Up Virginia, equipping you to speak up on the life, family, and freedom issues that matter most to you. From the Family Foundation, I'm your host, Candy Cushman. Well, welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us for Speak Up Virginia. You know, I think we've all been processing the last several days, this red wave that swept the nation last week and how exactly that happened. We're thankful for it, but how did we get there? And I think a big part of the conversation is how do we continue with this momentum on the issues social conservatives really care about life, family and freedom, especially with all these new voters yeah. that are apparently part of this Republican coalition, you know, acquainting them with why these issues matters. And there's a lot of conversation happening around that. And to that point, we have a very encouraging message to share with you today from Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears that we're going to be able to share a little bit later but to guide us into this conversation, I have with me today my colleague, Dr. Todd Yaki. Mm -hmm. He oversees the policy and government relations mm -hmm. um, department at Family Foundation of Virginia. Yeah. So glad to have you. Yeah, here, well, Todd. I'm glad to be here. And it's an exciting time. I feel joyful. Yes. You know? It's exciting to see so many of the issues that we have been fighting you know, against or for, and you know, in some cases, but against, you know, transgenderism and, you know, uh, you know, the devaluing of the sanctity of life and all yeah. of that, the people showed up and they rebuked a lot of these progressive leftist issues and, yeah. and policies they've been putting forward. And it's refreshing to see them come out. Yeah. They said yeah. enough is enough. Let's focus on yeah. our families. That's right. What were some of the surprises that you saw? Yeah, that's a great question As I kind of think about how it all turned, you know, we're all kind of processing it. But I was really impressed with the coalition that came together yeah. that turned out. You know, you have you have RFK Jr., you have Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, all, acro all oh, yeah. across the board. Then, yeah. then an Ali Beth Stuckey, yeah. who's a social conservative. And then you throw in someone like a Roberto Clemente Jr., who is Roberto Clemente's son, come out in favor of Trump. And, and okay, for those of us who don't know Clemente, oh, uh, he Roberto Clemente was a famous and one of the best baseball players for okay. the Pittsburgh Pirates okay. of all time in history. And so his son, all right, Roberto Clemente Jr., yes, uh, Apparently, he came out. He's and a it big was, part of the it election. It was a process. big deal. It okay. was. You know, I saw that in the last few days. <laughs> he came out in support of Trump. And, but it was just an impressive coalition yeah. of different viewpoints that came together for a common cause to reject and rebuke these these progressive policies. Okay, and even Petey the Scroll being martyred yes. had a part to play in this. Who would have thought? You yeah. know, he tipped the balance there and, and and, um, you know, he became just a national icon in just a few days. <laughs> I know. You know, you we're in an interesting era when PD the Scroll is part of the election <laughs> yeah. process. Yeah. That's, the American people said, that's enough. Yes. No, we're, we're not taking it Government anymore. Government officials raiding the home <laughs> over yeah. a scroll. Yeah. It was kind of symbolic of yeah. bigger issues, I guess. Um but, you know, I found it also interesting on the left side of things. They brought out all of their big guns with yeah. um, Beyonce, Oprah, Winfrey, you know, yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And, and it wasn't enough. No, uh -uh. I, I think that, they, yeah, you're right. They brought out the Hollywood elites. You yeah. know, all of them came out in favor of of the progressive, you know, of for uh, Harris. And, and they overlooked the American people, you know. They can they provide entertainment. That's great. But at the end of the day, the people went to the ballots because they're tired of paying hundreds of more dollars in grocery bills yeah. and energy costs. And they wanted results. They wanted a change. They And they made change happen on election night. Yeah. And for those of us who have watched Hollywood leftist media dragged this nation into a godless place for years. It was really refreshing for them to be essentially treated as irrelevant, right? Yeah, yeah. That, um, yeah. The, the, and it gets to the point that we're a country where, you know, that's that's a small kind of part of our lifestyle or of yeah. of the population. Every, 
working families. You know, yeah. That's the bedrock of our country. Right. And when you get to things like school choice or um, groceries, the economy, you know, being able to live out your faith without government intrusion, those are things that really matter to the American people. Yeah. Hollywood is not reality. Yeah. That's what it got down to. Yeah. yeah. Well, also interesting, I was looking at that it looks like maybe over 4 million of your voices, you that spoke up by going to the ballot box, put Donald Trump over the edge with the votes he needed. I think we got to 295 Mm -hmm. um, with the Electoral College. Todd, how are you processing um, just the fact that that it was 4 million votes, maybe over that in particular, that got Donald Trump the sweep? But at the same time, we still know that at least 25 million Mm. Christians chose not to engage, even though by God's grace, we have this outcome, but there were 25 million Christians at least that sat this out. Yeah. Well, for those Christians that did engage, we're very grateful for that. And you played a significant role in this election because your values, what you believe in and stand for, helped make a difference in this election cycle. I think... You know, as I kind of hear about the number of Christians that are staying at home, I think in the long run, we've got to be careful about this because the more and more that Christians sit out, the less and less the people that are in power and that win these elections are going to pay attention to your values and your interests. And they will no longer come to you when they need you for these elections. And your voice gets can get smaller. You've, you, This is why having Christians come out. Yeah. And voice their their opinions and say this is this is where I stand on these issues. We if if the church and the Christians came out, we could make inroads everywhere, all across the country, yeah. when it comes to elections and on policy where it matters. Yeah, and on the life issue, you know, you, you don't want your values to be taken for granted. Like, well, we can do a few token issues here and then, but that's not the group we really need to win. So we're going to ignore them. And on the life issue, you know, we were already concerned about some weakening in that area. And so if you had those 25 million Christians weighing Mm -hmm. into that, maybe even in the primary, would this be different on the life issue right now? Yeah. And that's a fair point. And that's something that we're going to be paying attention to. And we're going to need those, those individuals, those Christians, the people of faith to come out as we go into our general assembly session here at the state level, because that's going to be a front and center issue. Yeah. Um, I think you take the good, A lot of Christians came out. Yeah. Let's say that there is room for improvement and to be able to get engaged and to recognize your voice matters. You have a responsibility to be a good steward of of your government that you've been given here. And and we've been given some grace in this moment. And I think Christians need to take hold of that. Well, I'd say even at the local level, we have seen how the voices coming out make a difference, whether it's getting a parental rights policy passed through the school board or challenging the Fairfax Board of Supervisors on declaring Easter Sunday, Transgender Day of Visibility. None of this, you know, on on all those issues, we have had movement um, response and none of that would be happening if local churches local families were not physically coming out and speaking up. So we Mm -hmm. see that all the Mm -hmm. way, you know, from the local level to the ballot box. Todd, I just, I'm curious, how do you think these trans, these issues on um, transgender activism in schools and the pro-life battle over the abortion amendment we're facing here in Virginia, how might those change if millions of those Christians sitting at home actually got involved? Um, We could, we could, issue or we could be able to help usher in some policies that really protect minors and protect families as it relates to these issues as i was listening to a lot of the commentary one uh, one progressive commentary consultant said that of the top issues you had economy you had the border you had crime also thrown in there was transgender issues yeah people are, are tired of this being pushed on them and here's a great opportunity for the church and for people of faith to say all right to present a message of hope, too. It says, this is wrong, but let me give you a message of hope of what God says, what his word says about how man is created in his image, both male yeah. and female. And you can inspire people to embrace that. Right. And that's what 
these young kids are they're, they're needing something to hold on to in this culture that they yeah. they're in. And um, I think that the American people spoke. I hope that people here in Virginia, legislators here in Virginia, hear that message. Um, I hope it encourages mm-hmm. churches and people of faith to come out. Yeah. Well, we are starting to see media types grapple with this, and you know, especially. Um, we heard from, I'm just, I'm just remembering this comment from Chuck Todd uh-huh. early on, you know, when all this was happening, he was trying to wrestle with what this red wave we saw. Let's just listen to this clip of him trying to grasp why so many Latino voters and voters in particular came out and voted for Trump. Continues to me to be the big story of the night is the shift among Hispanics. Uh, look, Hispanic voters are swing voters. And I think, mm. you know, What's interesting here is the Republican Party treated treated them the same way they treated white working class voters. They courted them the same way they treated white working class voters. The Democratic Party has spent a lot of time treating it as an identity group, mm. you know, and I, you know whether it's Latinx, which sort of fell flat, and and so there's been a lot of hand wringing about this inside Democratic circles, a real split. Like you know, it, it was a total misread, sort of by the coastal strategists, when it comes to how to target working class voters of color. And I think we're starting to see sort of a working class coalition start to drift to the right. You know, before Donald Trump had working class whites. Now he's adding working class Hispanics and working class, not necessarily seeing evidence of working class African-Americans, but adding working class Hispanics that becomes a very durable majority. Well, another way of saying that is the education gap. Well, it's the same thing. College it's educated correct. or non-college it, educated. It, it doesn't matter your ethnicity. It matters your education. Right. But is it Donald Trump or is it the Republican Party? Or is it the Democratic Party? Hmm. Okay, meaning like I don't, you know, it's the Democrat. It is, first of all, Latino voters in many ways are, the same, are driven by the same issues. And there's one issue in particular, actually, that Republicans align closer with Latino voters or Latino voters align more closely with conservative uh, with the conservative party. And that's school choice. Mm-hmm. And that has been and you can't help but wonder, both Florida and Texas have been very aggressive about expanding school choice. Where have Republicans made the greatest gains among Hispanic voters? Uh, Florida and Texas. So education, the economy, those issues, bread and butter issues. Mm-hmm. And that is how they talk to them. Okay, clearly he was starting to get the idea that families on the ground actually care about, you know, their women and children and families economically surviving more than identity politics here. Right, yeah, and I I was really intrigued by that statement. He said, coastal consultants, I think is what he said, you know. You have your the guys on the East Coast and the and the people on the on the West Coast, and they don't have any clue what's going on in Middle America and yeah. what is really important to them, and it just goes to show that it's this is an elitist party now, yeah. you know, academic elites, the extremely multi wealthy, the Hollywood elites that 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 is what their party has become in contrast to this new coalition of working families. You look way too happy about this. It right really now. it it is an it is an interesting moment from a yeah. political standpoint of coalition building. Yeah. Well, another fascinating point he made was that that they are siding with conservatives on issues like school choice. What does that mean yeah. to you? Because I know you have really advocated for that in the, the Virginia General Assembly. Yeah. I, and I think, yeah, they're starting to realize that they're very family centric. The You know, the, the Hispanic communities, the Latino communities, they are very much focused on their families and how they can provide. You have know, the fathers really take um take to heart the responsibility of providing for families. But they're also looking for ways that they can educate their children where they're not getting some of these um, policies or some of these teachings that are conflicting with their traditional family value. The propaganda, yes. And they are becoming a very important player in the school choice movement. And we see that here on the ground in Virginia with groups that we're working with. And they could very well be one of the deciding um, populations, groups here in Virginia that help move us closer to more school choice, more school and, opportunities. And it's not just the propaganda issues. It's it's also the, the school safety, mm-hmm. um, the academic opportunity where they're yeah. just not going to be stuck in a failing school because of their zip code. Right. Right. And I think the brilliant thing that that, you know, regardless of whether you like them or not, what Trump did is he spoke to them like an American. He spoke mm-hmm. to them and they appealed to what interests them, just like he did any other 
um, demographic, any yes. other voting population, because he knows what they want. They're looking for policies that help them with their family and help them teach the values that are important to them. Yeah. All right. Well, I think ultimately that is the salt and light effect of Christians getting involved, um, that when the moment counts, you're able to advocate to to help families, um, but also holding government officials accountable because they see you as a community that they need to respond to. And so with with that point, I just want to go into Winsome Sears' speech here um, because she is giving an encouragement, I think, that is very timely right now to use our voices for the voiceless. You'll notice this speech was given before the election, but I, I still think what she was saying is going to be part of what helps us move forward. So without further ado, let's hear from Winsome Sears. Good to be with you all. And I want to start with a verse. Imagine that. I'm sure. And it's actually a verse from my last campaign, Psalm 133, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in peace and harmony. Yes, that verse, that psalm, beautifully encapsulates the strength and the blessing that's found in community and family. When we come together in unity, bound by a shared faith, common purpose, we become more than just individuals. Of course, we become a powerful force for good. This unity is not fleeting. It is not a feeling, but it's a profound gift from God. It is a blessing that propels us to support and uplift one another. It helps us to stand firm in our beliefs and to be the light in the world that is so desperately needed today. This is what makes each of you who make up the family in the Family Foundation so important. You are the living testament to the power of faith when it is shared and nurtured within families. So I want to express my deep gratitude to the Family Foundation who supported me 20 years ago when I first ran for office. I was just a child then. <laughs> Your dedicated leadership and every single member here we thank you for your tireless commitment to shared values. But when we think of family foundation, who do we think of? Who comes to mind? Ladies and gentlemen, is it Victoria who comes to mind? Is it the staff that comes to mind? Because they come to mind because they're always visible, they're always noticeable. If, when we think of the Family Foundation, we think of the staff and we think of Victoria, we have lost. Why do I say that? Well, because it means that the Family Foundation is not effective because when you think of planned parenthood, what do you think of? Do you think of a juggernaut? Of course you do. And that is who the Family Foundation must be seen as, a juggernaut. An invincible juggernaut. And so, when you see the emails come that asks you to show up, to help us to demonstrate to write your elected officials, to go visit your elected officials, to donate. Those in power must believe that there's a juggernaut, a juggernaut of people, not just Victoria, not just her staff. Because why? Well, they say that politicians can't read, but we can count. 
You are the voice for the voiceless, advocating for the sanctity of life and ensuring that every child conceived is recognized as a precious gift, a precious gift. You champion the cause of parents. You deserve to be supported, parents, not hindered by your school administrators and government. You have a noble task in raising your children with strong values and moral clarity. You believe, as I do, that government is best when it is limited, that we must defer to the family, to our faith, the private sector, whenever possible, that this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So your advocacy, Family Foundation, combined with the efforts of the Yunkin administration, has already made significant strides in strengthening the economic foundations of our wonderful commonwealth, in revitalizing our education system, in enhancing public safety, and most importantly, supporting families who are the backbone of Virginia. I always like to say, the first form of government is self-government. And if you don't govern yourself, well, somebody's going to do it for you. The second form of government, I like to think, is the family, because it is in the family that the child learns how to be, how to comport themselves, the right and the wrong. And if that foundation is destroyed, the country cannot be too far behind. That's why we need the Family Foundation. The policies that you advocate, hardworking families that you support, school options, parental empowerment again in education, the support for law enforcement is all very necessary. These are not just paper issues, they are tangible positive change that will impact lives. But, my friends, we cannot afford to become complacent. It's that juggernaut that we want, that effect. The challenges we face are many, and the tasks have never been higher. This November, this November, I have heard someone say we are voting for the lesser of two evils. And somebody else corrected and, so ne and said, no, we are voting for the lessening of evil. <laughs> Which of the two will lessen evil? That's what this is about because we have no less, and I like to talk about policy on the national level, and then there's international policy, because let me tell you, China, North Korea, Russia is watching, and if they sense weakness in America, they will move, we know this. So we must come with renewed vigor to elect leaders who will champion the values that we hold dear. Leaders who understand that our freedoms are not granted by the government, but by the creator himself. These are our God-given rights, and the founding fathers absolutely knew that because none other than Benjamin Franklin, when the Constitutional Convention could not come to an agreement, they, he said to them that they had studied the governments of previous empires, the Greeks, etc., and they found none of them to be lasting. And then they understood when they read Isaiah 33 and 22, that the Lord is our God, the Lord is our judge, 
the Lord is our king, the Lord is our lawgiver. And from there, you know, we got the three branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. We're gonna fight because there is no other way to move. We're gonna fight the good fight of faith. Again, it's not a passive call. You know what's that part of uh, the Bible where Moses was told, go say to Pharaoh, let my people go. That was a prophet who was sent to a politician. Imagine that. <laughs> and then we also know that Jesus himself had something to say about this when he was told that the Pharisees came to him and said, Herod Antipas wants to kill you. And Jesus said to them, go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. So, how many foxes are you gonna tell? Where to go? Exactly. You're not alone in this fight. I am here with you. I'm standing shoulder to shoulder. I urge you to continue the noble work. You are the stewards of this movement and it is your continued dedication that will carry us forward. So let us go forth with faith, with courage and with unity. Let us continue to be the light that shines in the darkness. Let us make the darkness tremble. Because that is our call. Together we will protect the future of our great commonwealth. We will protect our nation. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and to give you peace. God bless you. Okay, apparently, before we talk about Winston Sears' speech there, I need to set the record straight on something because mm -hmm. I was corrected during Winston's speech, you know, while we were taking this pause, uh, yeah, uh, that I got the squirrel's name wrong. So apparently we got that wrong. It is peanut, not PD. Yes. So it's, that's important. That's okay. That's okay. Um, the main thing is that we remember him. You know, in yes. this moment, he is not lost or forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We remember Peanut. Yeah, we remember Peanut. Glad I got yeah. the chance to clarify that. Yeah. Um, but seriously, you know, getting back to Winsome Sears' speech, that was just such an awesome moment at our, at our gala. And it was really moving when she got sincerely emotional there. Yeah. You know, because I really think this love for Christian speaking truth in the public square comes from a deep place for yeah. her. Yeah. And every fiber of her being, being yeah. I think, is where it comes from. I, yeah, yeah. I just, I loved how she's encouraging us to stand up and speak, you know, giving biblical references, you know, speaking out against Pharaoh and, and standing up to the Pharisees and, and, um, you know, to those foxes, you know, and, and to Herod the, yeah, fox. To Herod the fox. <laughs> yeah. And we have that ability to be able to go to our legislature, legislators and to be able to speak to them and, and tell them this is what is important to me and uh, or what is not important to me and, and what you value. And and we have a responsibility to do that. And I, I enjoyed that. That was great. Yeah. So her challenge was how many foxes are you going to tell? So how do you think people should translate that challenge into the next few weeks? Especially yeah. if you, you know, you're getting ready for the General Assembly. Are there certain foxes that you want? Yeah. Them? Well, I mean, I, I can't, I don't know if I can name exactly yeah, who they are, names. but yeah, but you know, just, 
I think now is a great time if you have have a moment to send an email, to make a phone call to to your legislator and just and remind them that you stand for the sanctity of life, that you stand for traditional family values, that you want to see more school choice or or you're tired of the woke um, transgender um philosophies being taught. Yeah. You know, now is the time to do now that. Now is the time. Now is the time because once session hits, I yeah. mean, it is a fast paced environment. This is a time when you have a, a captivated audience right. of your legislator. And, uh, and, and this is the time to be able to, to reach out to them and talk to them. Well, if you want to learn more about the issues that we're talking about and how to communicate with your representatives, be sure to check us out at familyfoundation.org. That's familyfoundation.org. And when you're there, make sure you're signed up for our email alerts, because we're about to head into the General Assembly session where lots of laws will be made. And if you're on our email alert, you will get urgent alerts from Todd. He Mm. sends a lot of those out um, telling you when you need to speak up and make your voice heard. And so to that point, let's make sure our voices are joined together. Be sure and share our Speak Up Virginia playlist on YouTube. And if you're on Um, an audio-only platform like Apple or Spotify. If you want to give us that five-star review, if you like what you hear, that helps reach even more people. Remember, we are stronger when we speak together. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.